for our sixth presentation. It is just a playtest away from a great video game by Elizabeth Mailer. And I did not pronounce her last name right. She knew I can't. So she said it's okay for me to say it. So hello, my name is Elizabeth, uh, and I work at Illogica, which is an indie video game studio in Montreal, Canada. So please excuse my accent, because I'm originally from France, and, well, English is not very easy for me. So come to see me afterwards if there's anything I say that you didn't catch. Today I'm going to, to talk for eight minutes about playtesting. Yeah. I'm not going to explain you what a playtest is, why you should playtest, when to playtest a game, or how, or with whom, because there's already plenty of information about that on the internet, for the example, the extra credits video about playtesting. So today I'm just going to talk about eight mistakes that I observe among developers who organize playtests, mistakes that can and should be avoided. So, mistake number one not thinking ahead about what you want to play test. Okay, that's cool, you want to play test a game, but what exactly in it do you want to play test? You have to be as specific as possible. For example, if you want to test the controls of the games, uh, you might want to get feedback to see if they are intuitive, or you might want to know if uh, players are able to uh, use them during very difficult challenges. Depending, depending on what you're looking for, this will influence what you will say to and how you work with the playtester. For example, it will determine if you are going to explain how the control works at the beginning of the test or not. Mistake number two, not preparing a test protocol, which is the list of steps in the playtest. For example, you need to be prepared about how you will welcome the tester what game phase you want to test, your open-ended questions, as well as your closed-ended questions. The more specific you are in your protocol, uh, the more you'll be able to reuse the protocol exactly the same way with all of your testers. So you'll be able to compare the test results without the results being biased. Also, by preparing your playtest ahead, you will be more relaxed during the test and you will make fewer mistakes. Yeah. Mistake number three, not using an analy analysis grid. So I've often seen situations where the person organizing the playtest is happy just to take notes in his or her notebook. So using an analysis grid, um, well, it makes your life easier so that you can take notes on the different items that interest you during the playtest. For example, in one section of the grid, I will take notes on the use of the camera. In another section, I will take notes on which skill uh, is used by the player and how many times they use each skill. And um, also, you should have one section for everything that wasn't planned, obviously. So this grid will facilitate your analysis in the end of the playtest, but during the playtest also, if you see that one of your sections is empty, so you can return to it with your playtest before that he leaves or she leaves. For example, you say, hey, you never use this skill, why? Mistake number four, not making your playtester feel at ease. Here I'm talking about psychological comfort because nobody likes to participate in a test for 30 minutes and feeling like they're being observed. It's quite stressful. So you have to reassure your tester you have to welcome them nicely, you introduce yourself, you can even talk about the weather. Uh, then you have to inform them about the structure of the test. Let them know how long it will be and what are the different steps involved. You have to position yourself that you are barely noticeable, but so that you can see as much as possible. And above all, that I really want you to remember, there's a magic sentence you have to say. We are not here to test your skill in the game. We are here to test the game, not you. If you get stuck somewhere, if you're having trouble, it's the fault of the game and it's not yours. Mistake number five, asking too many questions to the playtest at the beginning of the test. Imagine you, 
you are going to a test and you are asked if you are good in racing games and if you play them a lot. And you say yes, and then you are asked to play a racing game. Well, you wouldn't want to look like you lied about it, so you are going to try to perform in the game and you will put much more effort in the test that you would normally do. So, remember, all the questions concerning the player and his or her habits will normally have the same answer as in the end of the test. So wait until the end to ask them, because if not, you will skew the results of the test. Mistake number six, let the player taste or feel your presence. Obviously, you have to avoid talking, but you should also avoid the, mm-hmm, uh-oh, that may redirect the play tester. Also, if you take notes, and I really do hope you take notes, take down continuously. Even when there is nothing to note, make doodles. If not, the tester may think that he or she did something wrong during the playtest, and that might change the way the playtester behaves. Mistake number seven, formulating questions in a leading way. For example, you can give too much information to the tester. For example, what do you think of this interface element? Maybe the tester didn't even notice this element, so you should better ask, can you give me feedback on all of the interface elements you saw in the game? Also, you should avoid questions that encourage the play tester to respond in a certain way. For example, you said you didn't like the monster's design. Uh, would you prefer it to be bigger and even more green? So I would suggest asking a more open-ended question like, what would you change in the monster's design? And last, jumping to conclusions. You just completed a test with two people. They both play the game without having any problem with respect to the controls of the games. So everything is perfect, hmm? No. Because if you have tested with three more people, you would have seen that the last three had had a, a major problem with the game controls. Do the test with at least five people using the exact same protocol before drawing any conclusions. And don't do it with more than 20 people also. You don't have to use too much time on it. But Please, at least five. So we've come to the end of my presentation. If you want to organize a playtest and you have more questions or you didn't catch my French accent, so do not hesitate to contact me.